What's up everybody, I'm EdEkMX and welcome to my channel. So in this video we will build a very special suppressor, not an actual suppressor, it's a replica of a suppressor because otherwise I would go to jail. I am talking of course of the Hexagon Tactical Waffle Iron Suppressor. And you may wonder why Waffle Iron? Well, it looks like a Waffle Iron. Not completely like a Waffle Iron, but it has a texture on it. But that is not the only feature, it has also a very unique design. Basically I've never seen a suppressor that comes to anything close like that. And also it has a very interesting locking mechanism, which I also copied. And yes, as always, I will share my 3D model with my Patreons, you can find the link down below. You maybe have seen that suppressor already in the very famous game Escape from Tarkov. Actually I knew about that suppressor for quite a while, but... It wasn't on my radar until I played Escape from Tarkov. And I was like, I want that. And for people who are not familiar with Escape from Tarkov, the gun attachments, suppressors, grips and whatnot are extremely high detail. They have basically the best in-game models of guns and their attachments of all games I ever played. So I used their 3D model as reference and made some scaling to it so I had everything I need and I jumped right into the 3D program which I use, which is Blender. Also a big disclaimer, all my Blender skills are also completely self-taught and I was thinking and debating if I want to show them off because maybe somebody on the other end of the screen is dying of a heart attack. But I decided to do so, but every time after about 20 minutes of working and modeling the Blender program crashed for some reason when I had the recording software in the background. So sadly I only have like 20 minutes of footage of me creating the 3D model. It took actually about, I don't know, like 20 minutes, 20, no not 20 minutes, 20 hours, about 20 hours. And because of that highly detailed EFT model I was also very quickly able to figure out the locking mechanism and made a copy of that as well. So it's the very next day and I have to admit that I messed up a little bit. I printed the first half of the suppressor and it came out great, looked awesome, a very nice surface and no separation in between the layers. And I started to print the second half of the suppressor right away, but then I was impatient and I started to sand the first half in the same room as the 3D printer is located. And yeah, the grinding put so much dust in the air, even though I have a cover for the spool, it kind of settled on there and it doesn't need much. Clog up the printing nozzle and this is what happened. It usually doesn't clog up completely, but you get those very, very nasty little separations in between the layers. You can see that here. The other side as well. Yeah. You can fix that but that is a tremendous amount of work I'm not willing to do so I started the print over and like I said I finished the first half and that looks super decent. Focus, focus. It looks super decent and I will do that now with the second side as well. So now it comes to the separation of the print from the 3D printing bed. And because of our sanding of the sandpaper, this is a little bit tricky because it sticks to that extremely well. <sighs> That's not good. Whoopsie. Hmm, like I said, that's going to be tricky. You need to be so careful when using knives and other sharp tools. I've seen so many injuries from people that try to remove stuff from the printing bed and slip and push the knife or spatula or whatever they use into their own flesh. Ah, there we go, nice. <laughs> Yeah, well, that looks awesome. And now you can tell how well everything sticks to the prepared tape. It's separated from the supports of the print before it's separated from the printing bed. That's insane. Oh, yeah. It doesn't even <laughs> come off the tape. Like I said, it's always a big hassle to do that, but this guarantees at least a completely flush surface that's faced towards the uh, glass bed. And then it was time for sanding. Hand sanding, a lot of hand sanding. In fact, it took 10 hours of sanding just for the suppressor and the locking mechanism and the muzzle device also took like five together. 
And no, I'm not extravagating. This is actually how long it took. Also, when you're trying to cut corners on the hand sanding, well, you can usually tell on the final result. But this is also a very difficult shape and very ungrateful shape for hand sanding because you need also to clean up all those little hexagons and the inside of those. So now it's time to cut the 24 by 1.5 millimeter thread into the muzzle device. This is pretty much the setup I always use because I don't have a chuck that's big enough for the lathe that holds a 24 millimeter tap. So I just grab the part, hold it down and slowly apply pressure, cut, pressure, cut, pressure, cut, pressure, you guessed it. Let me make you my face. Now and then I apply some water because even with such slow cutting operations it creates quite a bit of heat and I don't want the plastic to melt and the bit gets stuck inside of the plastic. And now it is time for the spicy ingredients. And it is sandblasting with a very fine medium. I haven't used a better technique to create a perfect finish on 3D printed parts in combination with hand sanding and sandblasting. So, sandblasting done, and now just look at this surface. Just look at it. The spots on it are just uh, a little bit of liquid or water that forms in the compressor, and it just spat on there. Doesn't matter. Has no impact on the paint job in the end, which is what we are going to do now. When it comes to spray paint, I did a lot of experimenting in the last couple of years, tried a lot of different manufacturers and colors to find the one that perfectly fits my needs. And I stuck with MFH. This is a local company. I don't think you can find it outside from my country, like in the States or so. Uh, yeah, but MFH, Army Spray Paint Black. Basically, you're just looking for a black that's completely mud and is quickly drying and has like absolutely no glow to it, like clear coat glow. And a lot of colors that do that are for example, barbecue or oven spray paints, high temperature spray paints. They usually don't have like any acrylics in there and you can experiment with those. And yes, I know I should wear my respirator, but I don't know where it is right now. So, forgive me on that. This is now the base coat. And this one should have like a little bit of, you can see, a little bit of wet look. And then you let it dry for like, with this spray paint, 30 seconds for example. And you can see it's a little bit less reflective already. And then it's time to apply those short strokes. Let those little droplets fly and stick to the surface. And these little droplets that give a rough surface also help to break the light so you don't have so much reflection, which is basically everything when it comes to a matte look. And you can of course always use different kinds of spray paint for example matte black normal spray paint 
and combine that with stove paint, heat resistant paint. It always has that like graphite tone to it, which is perfect for giving parts that are supposed to get hot in real life, like suppressors, that delicate play of colors, like heat color change. Sadly, I don't have that right now, so I just stick to black. <laughs> And this is also why the sandblasting technique is so great, because if you have parts that are supposed to move and have a mechanical function, you don't want to hit it with, for example, a filler, spray, spray filler that creates the smooth surface because it adds material to the part itself and so it can get stuck, for example. You can also lose your details really quick when using filler, for example. It kind of ruins those crisp corners and edges. So let them dry up for like 20 minutes and then we do the final assembly. So first the grab screw. Put the little spring in there. And now we need our lock. Clip that in there. Looks fine. And we need our second half of the suppressor put that together just like this and we need the screws perfectly fine and now let's just hope that our muscle device still fits <laughs> this is so cool this is so insanely cool <laughs> I'm so stoked seriously I'm so stoked can't wait to put that onto a gun <laughs> This is so awesome. This is so sick. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching and joining me on this Let's Craft episode. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, because I certainly did. And I am super stoked and pleased with the outcome of our little project. And if you guys are interested in acquiring the SDL files for the suppressor, so you can make your own, check out the Patreon. It's linked down in the video description below. I will share my files there. That's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Yeah.